So guys, over the past few months, we have been noticing a trend, one that has been improving greatly on full self-driving and the other to further expand it to the entire fleet. Not only has Tesla been preparing for the greatest event of the century happening on October the 10th, just three days away from today, they have also been putting a ton of efforts into backwards compatibility for older vehicles. This has been especially noticed in the latest full self-driving software, compiling the 8x parameter count and bringing it to hard hardware 3 vehicles and although at this very moment the software stack is not yet identical and performances may vary from vehicle to vehicle, Elon has recently confirmed that a smoothness upgrade is in the works for hardware 3. So from what it seems, this is really great news for a lot of us as Tesla is going to be supporting Hardware 3 vehicles for the foreseeable future. Now that's not all. Aside from the Hardware 3 support, we are also getting some additional vehicles on the full self-driving network as well and this is one that you might not think of. Tesla has put an enormous amount of work and effort into optimizing for older hardware, so much so that even cars dating back to early 2016 is now getting the latest software updates. This this hardware suite came even before the mass market at Model 3 and Model Y was even announced. So limited to the S and X, these vehicles had one of the oldest hardware running a basic version of autopilot after transitioning away from Mobile Eye. Now more importantly, it has been running the very first version of the MCU powered by an Nvidia Tegra 3 chip. This chip was very limited in its capabilities due to being much slower in all the intensive apps required by Tesla. And further adding to things, there was a memory flaw that caused the MCU to malfunction as you regularly use the touchscreen. This eventually forced Tesla to recall over 100,000 vehicles, replacing the entire MCU to bring it back to compliance. So yeah, this gives you an idea of how bad the Nvidia Tegra 3 chip was and how much better the Intel Atom processor, even though we consider them extremely slow today, this is a night and day difference in terms of speed and performance. However, the unfortunate thing to all this is shortly after the initial software releases, they decided to end support entirely for Tegra 3, leaving it completely untouched until this point. This meant that if you had any car dating back to pre-2018 running the old MCU, you'd never be able to run any version of the full self-driving software. Now, before we move forward, it's best not to confuse the MCU, which is powering the touchscreen and running the Tegra 3 chip as we've talked about. This is different than from the FSD computer which is running the entire full self-driving suite so both of these are completely different and completely different chips. However, the correlation between these two chips is the fact that they were both not powerful enough to run the latest version of full self-driving and requires an upgrade. Over the later years, Tesla provided an upgrade path for these models, allowing older vehicles to upgrade their full self-driving computer to run the latest and newest version of full self-driving beta. But even then, as the software progresses, the bottleneck turned back to the MCU and the slow Tegra 3 processor. This processor would be in charge of all the visualizations on the display showing things such as road lines, cars, cones, pedestrians on top of the applications running the UI. All of this was just too much for the now 10 year old chip and there was no upgrade path possible for the touchscreen computer so Tesla decided to drop it behind altogether and end support for full self-driving on these vehicles. This of course was not good news for anyone, but as the software advances and the visuals become more complex, many owners just accepted the fact that their cars could not handle it. However, we have some really great news. After many years went by without any software progresses for those vehicles, they have managed to optimize it, refine it, and reduce the package size to now get it running on those older vehicles. Just a few weeks back from today, Tesla started rolling out the latest version of full self-driving software for vehicles running the Tegra 3 processor. This took an enormous amount of effort to compile the codes down to a level where it's able to run smoothly with all the visualizations and animations appearing on the display exactly as it would on newer models. It's just insane to think of it that they were able to optimize the code and reduce the file size down to a level where it's able to run smoothly on a chip that is similar and released the same time as the iPhone 4S. This is just out of this world in every single way. Now, with all that aside, there seems to be a recent revelation of what's coming up with full self-driving supervised and what they're going to have to do to keep it moving forward. According to many users who own both Hardware 3 and Hardware 4 vehicles, there seems to be a disparity in terms of performance when testing back to back. As you all know, full self-driving 12.5 branch has increased its parameter counts by 8 times 
meaning you would get a huge improvement in all areas going from prior releases. And although optimization has been done for Hardware 3 vehicles on the same brand, it is still running a separate stack that isn't on parity. It has been documented by users within the Tesla community as well as some notable sources such as not a Tesla app, they have confirmed that 12.5 is not a big improvement for Hardware 3 vehicles and aside from the vision-based tracking, it is relatively a minor improvement. This is not the case for Hardware 4 vehicles where it saw a dramatic leap in performance as soon as it was updated to 12.5. So for the time being, we don't know how much longer or if it will ever be on parity as Hardware 4 vehicles but one thing we do know for sure is they are possibly working on a retrofit for these older models. According According to a Twitter post by Greenly Only, he has discovered specific codes referencing to these changes within the latest 12.5 update. Tesla has been building additional hardware for images for Intel-based MCUs over the past few weeks. Going by what Green has provided, we can speculate that Tesla is preparing to merge the two codes together and get it running on a unified stack. Although nothing has been confirmed yet by Tesla, what we do know for sure is that there is currently no Model 3 that has a combination of hardware 4 and Intel based processor. This would mean that what Green has discovered is something completely new and something that they are currently testing. So although we aren't completely sure what's to come of this, there is a high likelihood that the Intel Atom processor just like the Nvidia Tegra 3 has reached its limits and Tesla is about to provide a retrofit. Now there's a couple other interesting things that Green has also noted. It's that the development of autopilot firmware have split into two separate nodes. Node A and Node B gets different images from both Hardware 3 and Hardware 4 whereas they were combined in previous releases. He goes on to state that the build rollouts for Hardware 3 vehicles are primarily intended to conserve limited space and only have what's needed for the local node. So ultimately that gives us an idea of where we are in terms of development of them merging the two codes together and bringing Hardware 3 back into the spotlight giving it much more life than what we see now. Now if all this ends up not being possible with the software optimizations that they are doing right now, for last case scenario, they could be working on in preparation to release the next retrofit for Hardware 3 vehicles. This is honestly going to be the biggest and most exciting upgrade of it all, bringing an upgrade path for Hardware 3 to Hardware 4 with millions of Hardware 3 vehicles on the road right now. It just doesn't make sense for them to abandon it completely. So preparing for a retrofit is probably the best case scenario and that is exactly what they are doing now. They are working behind the scenes to make it possible and in the case that the optimization again does not come to fruition, they are going to change out the full self-driving computer as well as the other sensors and the harnesses to make it all possible. So definitely, they think that they're gonna continue as far as possible, pushing this chip to its final limits, and then they are going to make all that happen. I will be staying on top of every little detail that comes up regarding this because it still affects me up to this very day. So make sure you stick around and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification if you haven't already done so. This is John once again. Peace out.